Thank you very much. When I was uh, asked to characterize this course after spending so many years here, there was no hesitation, there was no doubt in my mind about the words. I choose scientific excellence and unsurpassed hospitality. And that is really what we experience when we are invited as guests to your lovely course and your lovely country. It's for me an uh, honor to be invited and it's a great pleasure to be here and join uh, this course with you. My task today is to summarize a little bit of what we have discussed during the past years about procedures for stabilizing the shoulder. The history of uh, shoulder dislocations, we need to look a little bit closer to that because in the pre-radiographic area, the pathomechanism was based on cadaver studies and autopsy findings. And the first publications on treatment came at around the end of the 19th century. By Pertus, who introduced the soft tissue approach and uh, that was later copied by Bankart. Uh, and Eden, the first publication on the bony procedure. The Eden publication was uh, dated 1918, the Ubinet, a uh, small variation of the same, uh, same in 1932, independent from each other. This was before internet, you know. Uh, they used first Hibill graphs, but then uh, both authors uh, recommended the use of Iliac crest graphs later on. Uh, numerous modifications have been done to the procedure by Lange, later Lavik, and in Norway, this procedure was called after the Professor Alvik, who reported on three cases with a slightly modified technique and no uh, fixation device. Uh, this is his original drawing presented at the annual meeting of Oslo uh, orthopedic surgeons in 1961. It, this was widely in use for recurrent shoulder instability up till the 90s, 80s, and then disregarded because of the presence of bone loss. Very high percentage of this, these bone graphs were resorbed uh, when checked with radiography. An arthroscopic technique was then uh, introduced by Taverna in 2008, which was focused on bone loss. The history of the Bristol Lattaché procedure, first uh, published by Lattaché in 54, and the Bristow uh, independently in 58. Actually, that was a technique developed by his uh, chairman, uh, Helfet. But Helfet was afraid of the consequences of this technique, so he wouldn't have his name linked to it. So it was then called a Bristow procedure. Arthroscopic Latache introduced by Lafosse and Barlow. I will. Uh, just briefly uh, mention that they both have revised their procedures on multiple occasions after the first announcements. And in all publications about Latache, there is a high complication rate reported. Some of them very serious with axillary nerve transactions reported. So the treatment were for years based on tradition and not actual pathology until this game changer came in 2000, the publication by Burkhardt and De Beer, where they analyzed 194 Burkhardt patients, 21 patients with significant bone loss had a recurrence rate of 67% and the patients without bone loss had a 4% recurrence rate. So their conclusion in this um, uh, level four uh, publication uh, uh, consecutive series was that patients with bone loss should not be treated with arthroscopic bank art, but with a Latache procedure. And the follow-up publication came in 2007 uh, where their results actually were uh, confirmed. They had a recurrence rate of 4.9% at five years with the same patient characteristics as in the former publication and, and concluded expected good results with Latache procedure in this challenging patient population. This is a summary of different bone block techniques. They have all been described by, uh, by former speakers. I will not really go into it. Uh, but as you can see, there are several, uh, there are many ways to skin a fox. 
Current indications for bone replacing procedures are generally accepted to be significant bone loss, high number of dislocations, young age, male gender, contact sports, hyperlaxity, and not least the absence of sufficient soft tissue. Uh, in secondary cases, uh, recurrence after surgery, revision cases, it's generally accepted that you should, in many cases, do something more than just a soft tissue procedure. Uh, this uh, uh, review article uh, uh, have listed the approach to treatment of primary anterior shoulder dislocations. And as you can see, there are risk, certain risk factors defined. I will not go into that because it's always already been mentioned by many others. So, from Glenoid, Bonny Bankert and Hill Sachs, it's important both of them. And there is a, a debate ongoing about what is the critical amount of bone loss on the glenoid side and what is the critical amount of bone loss on the uh, humeral side. For uh, bipolar effects, it's especially important to realize that you have a bipolar effect. And Giacomo introduced his on and off track uh, equation in 2014, uh, said to be helpful in decision making in bipolar defects. The problem with this is that it's notoriously difficult to uh, do this equation, and it's been shown in literature that the inter observer variation is very great. So, uh, in our practice, we still use the uh, per-operative evaluation of if the in, uh, hill sac lesion is engaging or not, and uh, take that also into consideration when we plan for the procedure. Uh, for bone loss on the humeral side, um, um, we have a, a standardized measurement method with CT. What about bone loss? This uh, publication showed that first-time anterior shoulder dislocations have up to 22% of glenoid defects and up to 70% of humeral head impression called hill sacs fractures. And with recurrent dislocation, the figures are even higher, 49 to 86% glenoid defects and up to 100% humeral defects. And, but out of these 27 studies, there was no consensus on when a bony procedure is indicated. What is the critical bone loss? Complications with bony procedures are rated very high in most publications, up usually between 15 and 30 percent. And they are uh, divided into intraoperative complications as graft-related malpositioning and fracture, as nerve injuries, you know, we know about the nerves at risk, and as vascular injuries, which is quite rare actually. And also the post-operative with the immediate complications like hematoma and swelling, like the delayed ones as infection, neuropraxia, and as the long-term one, non unioselysis arthritis. So what is then in the literature uh, uh, when we compare these procedures? This review paper from 2014 uh, compared the Latache, Bristol and Eden Hibernet procedures uh, is based on 46 publications with 3,200 shoulders and with a quality factor of 65. As you know, this can be rated from 0 to 100. 100 is the best. It's only level 2, 3 and 4 studies. And they evaluated the clinical outcome and recurrence rate. Another uh, more recent publication, actually recommendable, published in the Journal of the American uh, Association of Orthopedic Surgeons, uh, looked at the bony reconstruction of anterior rim, extensive review with 62 references, 12 level one studies, three level two studies, and they have done an assessment of the bony deficiency with CT scan or MRI and the glenoid track. The biomechanics, the treatment algorithm, and the results, and we will look a little bit closer to this. Biomechanics of shoulder instability is still not fully understood. But in uh, many uh, authors now, now state that down to 13% glenoid bone loss can be associated with failure of soft tissue procedures. 
And bipolar bone loss is very important to recognize. So this is then the treatment algorithm recommended in this review paper. What is then the treatment? Here are the uh, uh, drawing of the different ways of doing the Lataché procedure, as you can see. And there are also a visualization of the bone block procedure and the graft used. Arthroscopic bone block technique, uh, as uh, uh, popularized by uh, Etora, will I just skip because La uh, Manost already presented the results, so I will just go through this. And uh, we will look a little bit at the results from the uh, um, systematic review. And as you can see from this, the conclusion is that an arthroscopic Bristol-Lattarsi procedure seems to be better in terms of prevention of recurrence and rehabilitation, but randomized studies are needed. And they have shown that the uh, Edenhubinet procedures have the highest rate of post-operative osteoarthritis and recurrence, and the clinical outcomes are similar. These are the results from the other review article. They say that, uh, state that biomechanically the Bristol-Lattarsi have the greatest stabilizing potential due to the sling effect. There is promising results with arthroscopic latache techniques, but not yet used universally accepted because of the learning curve. Bone block procedures have shown good results and nice remodeling with implant-free techniques. And osteochondral allografts, as popularized by Provencher, have limited clinical and radiographic results. And there is a concern with availability, contamination, and viability. So, what about the bone block procedures? Later years, is it indicated with bone loss reported increased the incidence of OA, osteoarthritis, 10 to 15 percent. It's comparably, it's more, most of the time the same in, in most publications with Lattaché and bone block procedure. And it's possibly related both to technical errors with the bone block procedure and articular damage from repeated dislocations. The take home message is that the coracoid and iliac crest bone graft works well for glenoid bone deficiency, and glenoid deficiency is usually at 2 to 6 o'clock. Graft position is probably important. Combined hyperlaxity and structural injury is uh, an indication for Lattaché, which adds the sling effect and increases dynamic stability. And bony augmentation procedures increased tenfold in the US in the area 2004 to 2013, but still the complication rate was unchanged 20%. Issues with the jury is still out, combined, combined defects, keywords, remplissage, bipolar grafting, glenoid track, graft breakage, healing of resorption of combined soft tissue procedures, complication rates, persistent disability, inferior instability, a very difficult problem to solve, and the development of osteoarthritis. So, we have not all the answers yet. Thank you.